This is, are we on, Laura? Yes, sir. 10 C01 2403 F6 230 State of Indiana versus Casey. No, um, I've had several motions filed. It was last Friday, son. Judge, I think I initially filed several motions on Thursday, then filed by, followed by more motions on Monday, except okay. yesterday. All right. Um, so we'll take up some of those motions. All right. There we go are sitting here at the moment so Sonny would you like to argue? I would, judge. Yeah. I would if the court would allow I know we're here for several matters most of which were filed by me I'd like to begin by arguing my motion to continue Casey's jury trial does that please the court no objection thank you judge judge I primarily filed this motion to continue because the present course of Casey's defense did not present itself until it became clear that Jamie Knoll would not be returning to the family home at the beginning of June, and that instead he would remain incarcerated in the Scott County Jail. Since then, with Casey and her mother and her sisters away from Jamie's physical presence and his physical control, a much clearer picture of the control and the manipulation and the relationship that he had with his immediate family has emerged. As I began to realize that during the month of June after Jamie remained in Scott County, I started looking for an expert in the area of coercive control. Coercive control is essentially a pattern of controlling behavior and abusive manipulated behavior that can change the way that a person processes information and change the way that they're able to respond when that person tells them to do something. And I think it's very important here. Judge, I was able to find Dr. Lisa Fontes, who is an expert in that area from the University of Massachusetts, and I engaged with Dr. Fontes in July of this year. I believe that Mr. Matt Mahan has also engaged with this Mrs. Dr. Fontes on behalf of his client, Misty. Judge, I disclosed that she was going to be an expert in this case formally last week. I'm asking for a continuance so that Dr. Fontes has the time that she needs to get into this case to look at the evidence, to look at the types of communication that Jamie had with his family, with his daughters, with his wife, and to look at the ways that he controlled and manipulated them and what their life was like. I'm also asking for continuance for another related reason, Judge, and that is because in the past week or so, I have received additional discovery from the state of Indiana. On July 31st, there was a discovery disclosure filed into Casey's case. I believe that the information in that disclosure will be forthcoming from Mr. Hurdle. I do not have it yet. However, I know that it does involve some recent search warrants that name Casey, and it's clearly very important that I get that and I'm able to review it. But secondly, Judge, and perhaps more importantly, I requested at a status conference in Washington County that I be provided with all of the jail phone calls that Jamie Null has made while incarcerated in the Scott County Jail. I'm entitled to those as a piece of discovery. The state police are listening to them. And Sunday, two days ago, I began to receive those calls. The format that I'm receiving those voluminous calls in is that I'm getting forwarded emails from the Scott County Jail. Attached to each email are approximately three telephone calls. And so far, I received probably 250 emails. So 250 times three, are the number of calls that I believe I have right now. Due to that formatting, I'll need to download those calls, organize them, and before I can even begin to understand what they are or how to use them. I also think that those phone calls are going to be some of the most important pieces of evidence for Dr. Fontes to review in her evaluation. So those things are very important to me, Judge, and I'm here to ask for a continuance, not for the sake of delay, but so that I can present for Casey, the best defense that exists. And that's what I'm here to do today, Judge. That's why I filed the things that I filed and why I'm asking for this continuance. As the court is aware, I also filed, among my other filings, a request for a discovery deadline. Judge, we know this investigation is ongoing. I know the state police continue to do search warrants. I know they made some calls regarding Casey's case last night. And all of these things result in additional discovery. And additional discovery forces me to ask for time to review that. 
I don't want this to be something that continually happens, Judge. And so today, I'm asking for a discovery deadline prior to the trial date so that there is a cutoff for the state of Indiana to provide discovery to me that I have to review and prepare to defend. Judge, I think it's important that we realize that at some point, the investigation has to cease and a resolution must be had. That resolution can be had in several different ways. It can be a trial, it can be via negotiations, but these charges were filed in March and this is not a situation on behalf of Casey, because she shares my thoughts on this, that we want to continue indefinitely. We want this wrapped up one way or another, Judge, and I'm here to ask that her case be set with Misty Knoll's case in October, which is, I suppose, approximately two and a half months away at this point. And we have a further motion to order regarding Joyner. Uh, Ms. Bush, I'll tell. At, at our status conference in Washington County, uh, I indicated that I would not be inclined to continue the trial date unless there was significant movement on one or both sides. I, I haven't heard that there's significant movement one way or another. So why, why did you wait so late to uh, retain the expert? Judge, movement as far as negotiations? Yes. Judge, I would note Not that, that I'm entitled to know the state of the I, negotiations. I I'm happy to give a brief outline to discuss that. Judge, there has been some movement regarding negotiations. There have been some further conversations. I did make Mr. Hurdle aware that the expert would be forthcoming. However, there is a process that governs us right now through the Attorney General case regarding any money that may be spent for Casey's defense. So there is a process I have to go through to make the Attorney General aware of any requests that I'm going to be making. So everything in that case has the ability to some extent to delay the things in this case because we are working very cooperatively with the Attorney General regarding that injunction. Okay, but apparently they've authorized you to expend funds to obtain this expert witness, correct? Judge, I have sent the request to them. I would leave it at that for now. Some of our negotiation discussions with the Attorney General are confidential. I would not want to violate that. I understand. But I would stay on, stay on the record that Ms. F Dr. Fontes has agreed to be our expert in this case as well as Ms. Misty's case. Mr. Hurdle. Your Honor, with re, uh, respect to the, uh, the motion to continue, um, candidly, the state has, has no objection to the, uh, the continuance. Uh, the state, as well as the defense, I think, doesn't want to prolong this case indefinitely. I know the court doesn't either. Um, if the court told us we had to be prepared, we would be prepared. Um, maybe as the court had mentioned before, Casey Knoll and Missy Knoll's case maybe is not quite as complicated as uh, Jamie Knoll's is, uh, dealing with um, tax issues as well as the expenditures on the American Express card. Um, but we do see some value in um, moving this and allowing for the continuation of discovery. The state would have serious concerns, though, about trying to try this in a couple of weeks, given the fact that an expert for the defense was just disclosed and a um, a defense of sorts is being, I guess, proposed at least to the court and to uh, to the state right now with uh, Dr. Dr. Fontes, um, and I think the state was going to need some time to at least um, maybe depose her or at least have a uh, informal conversation with her, uh, whether that be via Zoom, whether it be telephone or in person or all the above. I, I don't know. Um, but having just received her name last week puts the state in, in, a, in a bit of a bind. Um, so with that, the, the state has no objection to the continuance. Um, oh. And just, I know um, Ms. Bush discussed the uh, discovery deadline. Um, you know, all due respect, the defense wants and is entitled to what we're finding in search warrants, in interviews, and everything else, because some of it may be exculpatory and some of it may not be exculpatory. They may not realize that my duty is 
anything exculpatory has got to be turned over because of Brady. And if I don't, then I'm subject to ethical violations and et cetera. So I think for the court then to cut off all discovery puts me in a trick bag that if I get something, say a, a jail call, say Jamie Knoll makes a phone call that is exculpatory to Misty Knoll or to Casey Knoll, and are we saying, okay, you can't turn that over, Mr. Hurdle. Discovery deadline's passed, we're finished. And it's something of significance to them. So it's, it's as they want to maybe have their cake and eat it too, you want this information, but you want the deadline nailed down also. So I'm not sure what the result is, but I feel like I have a duty to turn this over, and I will continue to turn it over until the court says, Mr. Hurdle, stop turning things over. And I, I don't know that I, that ever ends, um, as long as it's potentially exculpatory. So I know those were the two things that um, Ms. Bush brought up in her, her argument on the continuance and then on the discovery deadline. Um, I don't believe we got into the um, motions in limine or the joiner at this point, but uh, I'll address those as, as they come. Um, Mr. Hurdle, there's been 67 search warrants, which is a large number of search warrants for a particular matter. And I, I've signed all of them, and I'm aware that the last several have mentioned uh, Casey Null as someone you're seeking information about. And I don't know whether you've got that information or not. Um, is there possibilities that there may be additional charges against Casey Knoll? Your Honor, in complete candor to that, I, I don't know. Um, there have been discussions with the state, um, as the prosecutor's office, with the Indiana State Police, saying, guys, do we have, maybe we need to turn this spigot off at some point in time and say enough is enough and we play the hand that we're dealt right now in a very um, figurative sense that we deal with the charges. But there is a little bit of an obligation that I think the state police believe as well as the, uh, the state of Indiana the prosecutor's office believe that if we're presented with potential additional criminal charges, do we have a duty or responsibility to file a criminal charge based on those? Um, I know that's a long way getting to, to what your question was. Are there going to be additional criminal charges? The, the answer is I don't know. I think it depends on what these warrants or what information still can surface um, at this point in time. And um, while the case itself may not be super complicated, there are enough layers here that there are things that have been hidden by the defendants um, that the state has not uncovered at this point in time. And, and there may be still some uncovering at this point in time. Ms. Bush Saltel, would you like the last word? Like would, the Judge. last Thank word? Excuse me. Thank you, Judge. And I would just note that Mr. Hurdle used the phrase, turn off the spigot. I think with my motion for a discovery deadline and, and exactly what that looks like, I think we could discuss. But right now, Casey's been charged since March. No further charges have been filed against her since March. I am preparing for a trial, Judge. I'm retaining expert witnesses. I'm preparing to schedule depositions. And my request, just as Mr. Hurdle put it, is to turn off that spigot in some way or another so that we can proceed. Thank you. And Mr. Hurdle mentioned something about the court uh, saying, we're going to have a trial, get ready. Well, you know, I denied the motion to continue summarily uh, last Friday, indicating that I wanted to hear further argument in regards to that matter. And as requested, um, I got the motions in limine and the proposed um, preliminary instructions, and I appreciate the uh, prompt response. So since the state does not object, I will grant a continuance. I'm not sure how long, and I don't know whether it'll be at the same time as Misty's. I want to hear your arguments in regards to Joinder. So Thank you, may, you, Judge. you may proceed. And Judge, if it would please the court, Mr. McMahon and I have filed nearly an identical
removal motion in Missy Knoll's case and Casey Knoll's case regarding the joinder. We'd ask to argue those together to expedite the court's time and Mr. Hurdle's time and the time of the witnesses and everyone any, present today. Any objection to Mr. Hurdle? No, Your Honor. Mr. McMahon, any objection? No, thank you, Your Honor. So, whoever would like to proceed? Uh, Judge, I'll, I'll proceed since Misty was a defendant before you before Casey was. Uh, as the court is familiar, and actually we are in the state, is, the allegations against both Casey and Misty, we have failure to pay income taxes related to the allegation that there were abuses of the uh, New Chapel American Express card where purchases were made and they were not claimed as income and were unauthorized with the state alleges. That is what we have with these two women. And it's the same American Express account. The only difference between the cases are that we have two defendants and we have different sets of income tax returns that, that will show what was claimed, what was not claimed. Otherwise, the American Express statements are the same for each. And the most compelling reason for joining your honor I think is to ease the burden on Clark County, Indiana. I'm happy to be an attorney who appears in Clark County regularly, and knowing the notoriety of this case, finding two juries is going to be difficult. Uh, I don't know how many jury summonses will go out. You know, typically in a, a high-profile case, 150 go out. By my experience in this area, last time I had a high-profile jury trial was last year in Floyd County, Indiana and 150 summonses went out. Um, I would expect it would be more so here because we have um, the null name attached to it. That's significant. And your honor is aware that Jamie Null was uh, a respected law enforcement officer, two-term sheriff, and more importantly, the chair of the Republican Party for the 9th Congressional District here in Indiana. So his name is recognized substantially. And when we consider judicial economy, it's the idea of saving the state, the taxpayers, the community, the burden of having two trials when one would suffice. I would expect that if you join these two cases, Your Honor, uh, a four-day trial for Misty or a four-day trial for Casey may turn out to be a six-day trial for both. And it eases the burden on this court staff, Your Honor, who travels from Washington County, Indiana, and also for the defendants. And we know that we are sacrificing something by asking for this because we have to combine our jury strikes, things of that nature. Um, the only complicated would be, insofar as Misty is charged with the level five felony, she's entitled to a 12 person jury, whereas Casey, looking at level six felony, she would get a six person jury. And I think that's something that could be set up, resolved on the back end by agreement, or I imagine that bridge has been crossed somewhere, although I've not researched it yet. But looking at Joyner, there's one person who has the discretion to say yes or no, and that's you. You, be, you are able to say, yes, I'm going to do this, or no, I'm not going to do it. And it's a discretionary call, and it's one that we think the facts of this case support it greatly because the charges are so alike. It is out of the same PCA and search warrants that the state has filed against Janelle. They are for lack of a better term, derivative defendants in that investigation. And the proof overlaps so much, it's hand in glove. We think that Georgia is proper. Thank you, sir. Mr. McMahon. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you brought up one point that was of great concern to the court, that uh, Misty has level five felonies and Casey has level six felonies. I don't disagree that they're charged with similar offenses except they occurred on different dates and times and for different purposes. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how to make it fair to either one of them by joining them with Casey's being a level six, which is a six-person jury, and, and Misty's being a level five. I, I don't disagree that prop, the state's probable witnesses are the same, 
but they were not charged as co-defendants at the same time. So that's some of the court's concern. Can you help alleviate that? Judge, the, 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 the simplest solution to that concern, I think, would be that uh, the court and panel, a six-person jury and a 12-person jury. You have the Misty Knoll jury, you have the Casey Knoll jury, because otherwise, the state and or Casey Knoll would have to agree that a 12-person jury would be proper, proper for Casey Knoll's case. And, and I know that that's unique, it's different, <laughs> but I do think that that would still serve judicial economy and serve the interests of Clark County, Indiana, as far as the cost and the expense, and also make it easier to suit a jury in these cases. Because once you have one trial, I, I'm looking at our friends from the media, and I'm counting four cameras right now, it's going to be harder to set a second trial. And so I do think that Joiner makes sense in this regard, Your Honor. And how we solve that problem is something that we would have to look into and try to do that. And I hope I've answered your question. I'm not trying to be flippant or smart, but it's, it's a unique issue, as you just mentioned. Thank you. Well, and I give you credit. I think that's an innovative idea. I'm not sure it's allowed, but we'll find out. I I'll, I'll consider it. Mr. Hurdle. Your Honor, I mean, joinder for trial purposes means the same jury. Um, the, the second proposal, while innovative as it may be, the state believes that's a mess. If we're gonna seat one jury to listen to Casey, six person, a 12 person to listen to Misty, are they supposed to talk amongst each other? Are they allowed to talk amongst each other? Are they gonna deliberate together? Are they not gonna deliberate together? The state believes that is a, uh, a disaster um, right for any appeal purposes down the road. Um, the, the state would, would certainly object to that. The, the other issue is whether or not six person or 12 person, whether one of them would waive the 12 person, Misty, or whether Casey would waive or ask the court to allow her a 12 person is something the state uh, would need to consider. Um, I, don't, I don't know at this point in time, in complete candor again to the court. I know the court has brought this up. Mr. McMahon now has brought it up as well. Uh, a level five, a level six, two very different, at least in the state of Indiana, jury pools and uh, six versus 12. And the way it was set up, uh, whenever it was, six versus 12 was done for a reason. And uh, um, I don't know that I want to be the test case for uh, a waiver of that. Um, so I guess, uh, Your Honor, the, the state would ask for a, a short period of time, whatever that may be, to look into this issue, five versus six um, level felonies, 12 person versus six person. And I, I'll just leave it at that, Your Honor. But the state is certainly not prepared to agree to uh, two separate juries hearing this case because I, I believe that's logistical, uh, a logistical nightmare. Mr. Hurl, how much time would you like to request to research uh, that issue? Your Honor, a week or less. So, by counsel for defense? Judge, I think today is Tuesday. I think if we could have an answer to the court next Monday, that would be appropriate. Mr. McMahon? Judge, that, that's agreeable. Thank you. Thank Perhaps you. it might make sense, Judge, right. if the court would like to set a telephonic status conference or something to that effect next Monday to discuss with all parties? Well, I'll give you till next Tuesday at noon. That'll give me time to look at it and then uh, we can have a telephonic status conference uh, sometime shortly after that. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Ms. bush Hotel, do you have something else? I do. I, ha I have more, Judge. First, I would address, per the court's order on Friday, I complied. I filed several motions in limine. I filed preliminary jury instructions. With the courts granting, at least to some extent, my motion to continue Casey's trial, I would request that a further date be set to hear those, as well as any additional that may be filed due to the recent discovery. Is that agreeable to the court? Mr. Hurdle? 
Your Honor, um, as long as the state may have an opportunity at some later point in time to either object or agree to the motions in limine that the uh, defense has filed, I, I, I no objection. Just moving that uh, to the next hearing date uh, that we have prior to the trial. And that is my request, Judge. Not to have them granted today, but to leave them pending and set them for another date. That's fine. Um. All right. I believe the last thing that I have pending, Judge, that I filed recently is a motion to slightly modify the terms of Casey's bond. And Judge, if the court is aware, since March, Casey has had a term of her bond that she must remain in the state of Indiana. There have been no violations of that. There have been, been no violations of any sort of Casey's bond. However, Judge, I'm asking to modify that slightly for several reasons. The first of those is that Casey and her mother Missy and her sister Gracie are all employed here locally full time. They have varying hours. Sometimes Casey works late. Sometimes she has to be there earlier. The same for her mother and sister. And as I stated before, we are working under the Attorney General regarding some things, regarding assets and those sorts of things. And currently, the three ladies are sharing two cars. Gracie currently works in Louisville. Missy and Casey work here in Indiana. However, they had to work out a schedule to pick each other up, drop each other off, all of those things. And it would greatly ease the strain on the three of them if Casey were able to drive to Louisville to pick up Gracie, to drop off Gracie, to do those sorts of things surrounding their employments and the ways that they're having to work together considering the current order from the Attorney General. Secondly, Judge, and perhaps more importantly, uh, yes. One moment. So you're telling me out of the hundreds of cars that was under the control of the Knoll family, I guess, there's only two left? Judge, there are two cars that are the type of cars that Misty Knoll, Casey Knoll, and Gracie Knoll are comfortable driving. They have no desire to drive around in Jamie Knoll's collectible car collection. They would not be comfortable doing so. It would not be appropriate to do so. Why? Judge, I think the women of the Knoll family are attempting to avoid public attention and public scrutiny. And also, many of those cars, Judge, are old cars. They don't know if they're functional, those sorts of things. Perfectly. Thank you, Judge. And secondly, and again, perhaps more importantly, due to the geographic nature of our area, our larger metro area is local. Our health centers are there. Our hospitals are there. Our mental health services. Many of them are located in the Louisville metro area. Casey has need of mental health services and health services. And being able to go to the Louisville metro area would greatly open her ability to have access to more providers and more specific providers. And so primarily, I am asking that the bond be modified for that reason, Judge. And I would ask the court to note that due to the geographic nature of our, reason, of, of our region, many people who are charged in southern Indiana actually live in Louisville. I believe, due to my practice in other surrounding counties, that all of the counties that run along the river have bond terms that allow people to at least go to the Louisville metro area due to that. And so I'm simply Ms. asking... Ms. Bush, I'll, tell, I'll yes, tell you, I don't care what other jurisdictions do There's no consequence to me so you might as well forget that argument that, that is just fine judge i was done with it anyway and so judge I, i'm simply asking for that slight modification it's certainly at the court's discretion whether to grant it or not i saved it for last today because i do believe it is the least important thing that we had to address here but wanted to put it in front of the court thank you um she won't be going to any irish pubs for celebration that would not be the intent Mr. McMahon. Uh, thank you, Judge Medlock. I, I filed a similar motion on behalf of Ms. Dino, and it's one she's been a defendant for about seven months right now, Your Honor, and she, there's no allegation that she has violated bond whatsoever. Um, I, I think she's shown proper re respect to the jurisdiction of this court. I, I have no reason to doubt that, Mr. McMahon. Yeah, it's one she works here in Clark County, Indiana. Um, 
The court's been gracious enough to allow her to visit me in my office in Louisville without having to ask for permission because the court noted that, that gets into the Sixth Amendment privilege that she has quite a bit. And your honors also allowed her with approval to go to Louisville for medical appointments. Uh, this is one of the most unique cases I've ever and, been And go to her daughter's uh, celebration. So, and, and Judge, we cannot thank you enough because that was very important for the family under a hard time. And thank you, sir. Um, and I did not mean to make short trip to that or, or not acknowledge that, sir. Um, well, I thought it was important that she be able to attend. And the family values that, Judge. Thank you. Uh, but no family lives in a bubble here in Floyd, Clark, even Harrison County. Uh, we're, we're not asking for a party pass under any circumstances, Your Honor, at all. It, it's just to take care of Gracie. And I think the court is aware that she is uh, a child on the spectrum and to make sure that she's okay because if there is an issue, they need to help her. And I know that because I have an autistic child. Um, it matters to be able to take care of that. Um, and this family loves Gracie very much and they want to take care of her and make sure that she has that invisible safety blanket that she needs. Um, and Judge, we're not asking for her to go to sporting events, to go to parties, Bars. It's just to be a regular person. And we understand that they are, there are terms of bond. Um, these women have posted their bond. Misty has done so. And if anything, they want privacy. They want a quiet life. Because if they were to go to dinner tonight at Texas Roadhouse off Edwards Parkway, people will take their photos. That happens to them. They have no privacy. They are a spectacle wherever they go. And so they are living in isolation within their own community. They get a little bit more anonymity in Louisville, but I'm not asking that they're allowed to go and live as though they're on spring break under any circumstances. And the other point I would like to add, Your Honor, with regard to the pole bills at the pole barn, I had the pleasure of touring the pole barn a couple of months ago. There's a 1959 Cadillac that does not have a door handle to open. Uh, there is an antique Clark County Sheriff police car. Uh, all of these are hot rods. Um, you know, it, it is something that looks like later in life somebody who loved hot wheels and matchboxes were able to buy them. They're not functional cars. We've asked the Attorney General for leave to purchase a car so that there's more reliable, um, modest transportation. And we're just asking that they have a little bit of liberty for the purpose of the family. And that's it, Judge. We don't want to uh, create a spectacle or show disrespect to the court or the state of Indiana. But I think that these women have lived um, in public scrutiny that is unusual. And it's one that they want to make sure that Gracie, who works over in Louisville, has the safety net that she needs. And that's the nature of our motion, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Hurdle. Your Honor, the, the state is not without empathy toward Misty or Casey or Gracie. Um, and I know that the court is not either. If there are doctor's appointments, if there are medical issues, if they need to see their attorney or there's some other issue other than Gracie's work that the court would deem appropriate, the state's position would be file the motion, let the court make that decision. Now, I, I'm not trying to bombard the court with motions to go to and from Louisville, but how often are doctor's appointments, how often are dentist appointments, chiropractors, things of that nature. I, I wouldn't think that many, and the state certainly is not going to object um, to those situations, much like it didn't object to the family going to Gracie's event in um, Louisville when uh, it was a work situation. Um, I, I would point out to the court that on 318 of this year, the court issued an order clarifying terms of bond. Defendant shall remain in the state of Indiana. Defendant shall not consume illegal drugs or alcohol. That the defendant shall not consume or commit any new offenses. Restrictions were not mentioned in defendant's initial hearing. And without the court's knowledge, did not appear in a bond form. Additionally, the state may consider the court may consider permission for the defendant to leave the state upon request by the defendant in writing. 
And I think that was done as a, if to avoid this issue here of the back and forth to Louisville at, uh, at a whim. And so the state would ask the court to kind of follow those original conditions of bond. And if there are issues that come up, then we deal with those. Maybe if they're that often, then we deal with those via Zoom or a conference call or something like that. Um, and I don't think the state's going to stand in the way of those certain things. I would point out that both defendants do work in the state of Indiana. This is a benefit for younger sister or daughter, Gracie. And, and, and while she may need some assistance or help, I don't know, um, without knowledge, whether or not she has a valid driver's license. I know that there was a graduation recently from a, uh, a university. So I, I don't know what limitations um, are prohibitive of her being able to go back and forth if she has a valid driver's license. Um, but uh, bond is supposed to be restrictive. Um, and it is restrictive on those two. The fallout is on younger sister or daughter, but that's because of this position that they have put the court in and themselves in, nobody else. I'd ask the court to consider that. I'm not unsympathetic to, to Gracie, as Mr. Hurdle said. I'm quite sympathetic. And I also agree with Mr. Hurdle that these ladies have they made decisions that brought themselves here. And there has to be some type of uh, restraint. Uh, counsel, if you will file with the court the list, the list of automobiles identified by make, model, and year that they have available to them and the, the vehicles they currently utilize for transportation and under seal where they would be going to in Louisville. I'll, I'll review that and then make a decision. In, in regards to the scrutiny uh, and getting their photographs taken, well, they're not the only ones that that happens to. It seems to happen to me on a fairly regular basis. And it's my understanding that uh, some scammers are now using my name to try to collect funds uh, from unwitting citizens. So we're all under scrutiny. Anything else, Ms. Bush, I'll tell? Judge, I believe that concludes everything that I can file for today's date. Mr. McMahon? Nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you for giving us your attention today. Mr. Hurdle? Your Honor, the, the issue of the, uh, the continuance that it's taken under advisement as far as a, a rescheduling date at yes. this point in time, and the, uh, the discovery deadline will also be taken under uh, advisement as well, Your Honor? It will. Okay, that's all I have. Once, once we determine what the new date will be and or whether it's going to be joined, uh, then we'll establish those dates and times. So, unless there's anything else, we'll be off record. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, the, uh, the time for the uh, filing or uh, position of the parties on the joinder um, will be noon next Tuesday. Is, yes. And is that something that we will handle via phone call to your office, or uh, are we to come back here? I would prefer that both parties, all three parties, file a brief with the court. And then we'll have a discussion after that. Okay, thank you. Depending Jeff. on <clears throat> the arguments that are that are made, um, I don't know that I necessarily will require a, an additional hearing. But I would like your your uh, supplemental arguments uh, filed with the court by next Tuesday at twelve. Thank you, Judge. Anything else? No, sure. Okay, we'll be off record. Thank you all.